Hey, um, since there are a lot of questions about TNV, the recovery menu, um, the settings and other stuff, I will just make a few videos to um, explain. I hope everything pretty good, so you um, can use TNV without any problems. Um, this video will be about the recovery menu. Um, videos how to install homebrews, ESOs, plugin themes, whatever will follow soon. Um, at first, we'll just um, go from setting to setting and explain what it does. Well, at first, configurations. Skip Sony logo. I would enable this because it saves time. Same about the game boot. Hide corrupt icons. I would also enable this. Hide MAC address. It's not important, but you can enable it if you want. If you don't want, don't enable it. Um, auto run program. This function is, by the way, not working, so just disable it. UMD mode. You can set it to Sony or M33. You should change it if a game is not working, so you can try it with the second driver. Fake region. Um, I would just disable it because you can apply your PS Vita's region to the XMB. Later about this um, at the end of the video. Use VSH menu. I would say yes, otherwise you can't access the recovery menu without restarting the game. Use TN network update. Yes. Um, is if TN releases a TN version 4 fix or TN version 5, you can just download download it like an update. Like with the PS Vita downloading an update or with the PSP downloading an update. So I would enable it. Fix exploit safe data. This is also, I'll recommend it to, to be enabled. Because um, when you play the game, the exploit game itself, it would just re... re <clears throat> it would just re-trigger the exploit, so you would have a loop. If you enable this, you can actually play the exploit game. Hide exploit game in XMB. Um, not really necessary. If you don't want to see the exploit game in the XMB, you can enable it. Hide pick a zero and pick one. This um, hides the little icon and the background icon of the games in the XMB. I disable it because I like these icons. If you want to speed up your XMB a bit, you can enable it. Hide custom firmware folders. Um, some games do not work if they find custom firmware folders, so just enable the function. Use extended colors. If you disable it, you just have the colors of the PSP 1000. If you put it to O2G, you got the colors of the PSP 2000. And if you put it on O3G, you get the colors of the PSP 3000, Go, and E1000. Use Sony PSP OSK. This will call the keyboard of the PSP if you enable it. If you disable it, you can just use the keyboard of the PS Vita, so you can use the touchscreen to write, which is pretty nice. I disabled it. Speed up memory stick access. You can enable and disable it. I've enabled it because it speeds up the memory stick. Um, recover menu color. Choose whatever you like. Red is default. I like green. Blue is also nice, but not on a PSP 2000 or a newer. And I consider the PS Vita newer um, because it's too dark. CN also looks okay. Yellow is also a very sexy color for the recovery menu. And purple is also okay. I personally stick with green. Okay, run program at. If you have a homebrew in set path, which will be slash PSP slash save data and then what, what tier, you can run a homebrew. I've put PSP filer in there because if I mess something up, I can just boot PSP Finder and fix it. Then advanced settings. Reset settings. This will reset the flash one, so it will reset every second settings. Your username, uh, the color you choose, the time, whatever. Uninstall 660 files. I would not do this except you want to reinstall the 660 files. And installing 660 files is important and necessary the first time you boot TNV. So if you just got the files and um, put them on the PS Vita, you should install 660 files so you can get to the XMB, otherwise it will not work and just crash. Advanced configurations. Simulate home button with button 1 and 2, and same for the note button. Um, this is pretty interesting. Um, usually you have this as a home button for the PS Vita, but if you press it, you come back to the live area. So how to solve it? You can um, configure two buttons, for example L and R, and if you press both at the same time, the PS Vita will think it's a home button, so you can use the home button on the XMB. I'm using left and right, so I can't accidentally press it, 
and left and right is actually not possible except if you map this to this or we'll just show it settings um, right stick you see I've assigned the right stick to this um, digital cross so I can use the left and right feature um, similar things I've made with the node and the yeah with the node button I'm using a circle and square the node button is except for one thing not necessarily the X and B you uh, just can change the equalizer when you're using headphones well or for screenshot plugins yeah um, these H plugins, those are the plugins for the X and B, game plugins for games, and Pops plugins for PS1 games. Um, you can enable this if you want to use plugins, if not, you can just disable it. Okay, let's go back. Um, CPU speed. Um, most of the time, it's recommended to put it on 333, then it's running the fastest, but it takes more battery. Um, some games don't work if you put it in 333, and in that case, just put it on default or 222 which is well the same as default I'm using uh, 333 because then it's uh, working the fastest God damn it. Um, plugins there you go um, if you have plugins installed at your Vita you can enable or disable them here um, be sure to put the plugins in the vsh.txt game.txt or pops.txt and last function registry hacks um, button is second. This changes if the circle and X button should behave as enter or back. On Japanese Vita, this would be enter, and in a non-Japanese Vita, this would be this would be enter. So it just changes the function of the buttons. Um, activate WMA. This enables you to use music in the WMA format for the uh, for the X and B's music player. You can just enable that. Flash Player. This enables Flash Player 6, which was still by Macromedia instead of Adobe, um, in, the PS in the PSP XMB's browser. Um, you can enable it even though the browser is really crappy. And finally, Applier PS Vita Registry. This will, um, this will get your PSN account, the date, your PSN account's name, your PS Vita's region, like Europe, America, whatever, and all the other stuff from your PS Vita to the X and B. So if your um, settings get reset, just use the apply PS Vita registry setting and everything should be set, the date, language and everything else. So yeah, and the last thing will be in the VSH menu. If you press select you get this VSH menu. I will just change the color because you can't really see it. The VSH menu. The first two options are like in the recovery menu for the speed of the games. Then the UMD ESO mode is again the driver. Um, the VSH menu color, you can choose whatever you like. Um, yeah. The TN recovery menu will get you back to the recovery menu. Suspend is the same as if you press the sleep button. And restart VSH is like when you need or when you want to enable a new plugin. No, I have to, to um, call it different. If, if you just restart the VSH, the XMB will kind of reboot. That's kind of it. And if you change any plugins and then restart the VSH, it will apply these changes. This is, by the way, not necessary if you change game or pops plugins because starting the game will then enable or disable the game. Yeah, and exit is just exit. So this is my little video about the PS, PS Vitas, PSP X and B's, God damn it, recovery menu and VSH menu. Um, it's a bit longer than I thought it would be, but I hope this clears things up. And yeah, have fun with T and V version four. Thanks, Total Noob, for this great work, and have nice holidays.